everyone and welcome back to my channel or if you're new here my name's Alexo Frey and welcome to another video I'm so glad you're here and I'm so glad you clicked on today's video of course we are doing something so exciting because I haven't done one of these videos in a very very long time probably not since last spring or summer I want to say it's because I'm not good at it honestly I am the worst at these types of videos so, by the title of today's video, you already know what we are going to be attempting to do. I am going to be attempting to read for 24 hours straight. I don't know how it's going to work out. I am not the best at reading for 24 hours straight because I personally really enjoy my sleep. So, I am on like a really wacky sleep schedule though at the moment so I feel like this is the perfect time for me to try one do this video because I have a better chance of staying awake for 24 hours also two, hopefully getting me on a better sleep schedule and I'm thinking if I can pull an all-nighter if I can stay awake for 24 hours I will probably want to go to sleep at a normal human time that is honestly the main reason for today's video I'm trying to fix my sleep schedule but also get through my February TBR. Today's video, we are going to be reading for 24 hours straight. Right now, it is 427 on a Sunday. I'll probably start reading around 445. I'm going to try and read until 445 p.m. Monday, tomorrow. So that is the whole idea of today's video. That is what we are doing. I'm super excited. I have done a few of these videos in the past and I usually fall asleep at some point or another because again your girl really likes her sleep over here so i'm very hopeful for today's video and i'm really excited to tackle my february tbr because i have a ton of super cute romances on the list i don't know if you guys noticed but they are all pink books for the month of february the month of love so i'm super excited i know you guys are super excited fingers crossed we can get through 24 hours of reading without falling asleep that is the goal we will see what happens i'm hopeful I'm optimistic. But with all that being said, we're gonna hop right into the reading vlog. Hey. Whoa. Whoa. I just dropped my phone. <laughs> Before we hop into it, I just want to take a quick moment to thank the sponsor of today's video, which is G2A.com. And I am so, so excited because this is such an exciting campaign that they are doing. And I know you guys are going to love and be so excited as well. So really quick, if you're not familiar, G2A.com is the biggest marketplace for digital goods such as games, gift cards, and software. They're known for great prices, instant delivery, and multiple payment methods. G2A.com is holding a huge Hogwarts Legacy contest to win one of five double trips down to the Wizarding World of Harry Potter in Universal Florida. They're going to be giving away five double invitations and paying for the entire trip down to Universal for you. So we're talking flights, hotel, and park tickets. And how you enter is super, super easy. All you have to do is go to g2a.com and purchase literally anything on their website. Using my link down below, you will register your purchase number and answer the short contest question. Design and name your spell. And then you just wait for an email or information to see if you won. You'll simply click on the enter the contest now. It will take you to the application form and there you will fill out your first name, your order number, your email, your country, and then of course your spell and the name of it. You can also buy multiple things off their website and use each order number as a new entry. So the more chances to win a trip, you guys can register using my link down below. So the first book I'm going to read is Love on the Brain by Allie Hazelwood. I am so excited for this and if you've been around for a hot minute, you guys already know. Oh ready know. How obsessed I am with the love hypothesis. I read that last year probably around the same time as now actually and I was so in love with Adam Carlson. He was just one of my all-time favorite book boyfriends. Everything about him was just that entire story was just absolutely incredible. So when I saw Ellie Hazelwood was coming out with a new one, I was so excited. We are finally reading it today. I believe this came out back in October and I was actually saving it specifically for February because I knew all the way back last year that for the month of February, I wanted to do a whole thing where I only read pink books and it just seemed so fitting. So I was literally saving this book for the month of February and I'm so excited because it is going to be our first read and I have such high hopes for this story. Allie Hazelwood is the queen of writing about women in STEM, academic loves, rivals, grumpy meets 
sunshine, fake dating, enemies to lovers. She's just the queen of writing all of my favorite tropes and all of my favorite things. So excited for this one. I'm already obsessed with it. This tells the story of B and Levi. I guess they went to school together and they didn't really like each other. Fast forward a few years later, B is co-leading a project at NASA with Levi after not seeing him since their college days. She finds out she's co-leading with the guy that literally despises her. On a NASA project, which is huge. I love Allie Hazelwood's writing. It's super easy, fast-paced, and I'm just really, really excited to start this. So we are gonna hop right into it. <laughs> So we are doing our one hour check-in. I haven't gotten too far in the book yet. We're only on page 52, chapter four. Nothing too crazy has happened yet. We just arrived in Houston to start on the project. NASA and Levi, that's like all that's literally happened so far. There was this one scene when B was kind of in, I don't even know how to explain it. She was just in a dangerous situation, I guess you could say. Levi just so happened to be there. But other than that, it seems like it's enemies at first sight. We're gonna keep going. It does kind of seem like a slower read right now for me, which is super weird because the love hypothesis was the complete opposite. I like through that book so so fast. I'm a bit nervous, just a little bit nervous because I'm not flying through this as fast as I thought I would and it's also not really grabbing my attention. We are going to keep going, fingers crossed it gets better. We have now been reading for about three hours and I am currently on page 104, chapter eight. Nothing too crazy has happened yet. It's just moving so slow. It's like such a slow paced read for me and it's just not like what I was expecting, I think. Like we've been reading for three hours, but I've only read like a hundred pages. So that's really weird for me. Nothing has really happened just yet. I feel like there is something up with Levi. I feel like it's hiding something from B. I don't know what. Maybe there's a miscommunication somewhere in in there but I feel like there's a reason for why he's acting the way he's acting towards her that's literally like all I have for you guys because nothing is actually happening in this book and I'm kind of salty about it like with the love hypothesis I was so like sucked into it immediately and it was such a fun and fast-paced read I could not put it down every chapter there was something new and exciting happening with this I just feel like every chapter nothing happens like there's no progress in the story or be in Levi's relationship. I don't know. I just find myself getting really bored and distracted super easily with it. I know we are only 100 pages in, but I'm just disappointed. Also, something else that I feel so bad. All B talks about is Marie Curry. This should just be a book about Marie Curry at this point because I feel like that's all I'm reading about is Marie Curry. I said what I said. I think it's cool that B keeps talking about Marie Curry and I think it's cool that she has all these connections to her and she's very passionate about her, but it just kind of is getting to a point where it's overkill. She's basically revolving her whole life around Marie Curry and it's just, it's so boring. We're gonna keep going. I'll probably update you guys in another like two, three, hours see where we're at i'm hoping it gets better if i don't like this book it's gonna make me so upset we have now been reading for a little bit over five hours i am on page 262 chapter 19. the story has picked up like a little bit more from the last time we talked i think the last time we talked i wasn't really into it and i was not liking it as much as i liked the love hypothesis but i'm happy
happy I stayed optimistic about it because the story has been picking up a little bit more. We only have this little chunk left though, so I don't know like what's going to happen because there's only this little bit left. But things with B and Levi have definitely escalated and I feel like we're starting to find out more, more things behind their relationship and kind of why they are the way they are towards each other, like why they hate each other, don't like each other. I also have fallen in love with the side characters, probably more so than the main characters, honestly. I really don't like B's character. I can't really connect to her and I think she's just, I feel bad for saying it, but I feel like she's kind of Levi, on the other hand, definitely is starting to give me more like Adam Carlson vibe. I am really happy though because I am starting to get really into the story. I'm questioning the fact that there's only this little bit left, but we are going to keep going. We're going to wrap up the story. Yeah. <laughs> Say hi to Stanley Cooper. Hello, Stanley Cooper. We have just gotten to the seven hour mark, a little bit over, and we have finished our first book of the reading vlog. I wanted to love this so much. That's just not what happened. Nothing like the love hypothesis whatsoever. I think it was super slow. The whole storyline and plot was kind of just boring in my opinion. I don't know. I just feel like there wasn't like a lot going on in this story and that's why I was so bored with it. I thought Levi's character was really cute and I think it's just because it reminded me of Adam Carlson. It just wasn't doing it for me, you know? This book just did not hit for me. It's a two star read for me. I <laughs> feel so bad because I know so many people loved this book. B just was so annoying in this book. The most interesting part of this book was the very, very end. There was like a minor plot twist at the end. The story was very predictable the entire time. So like by the end of the book, I kind of knew what was going to happen. I feel like there were just things that weren't actually explained at the end. So that was a little bit annoying. If the story leading up to the ending was a little bit more interesting and better, it probably would have been a three star read for me because the ending was semi enjoyable but to be honest I was just disappointed all around with this book I can't believe it and I'm so sorry if you enjoyed this book it just wasn't my cup of tea we are going to move on to our next read which I'm super excited about it's the do-over by Lynn Painter this is a super popular author I have her other book better than the movies which she like broke the internet last year it was so many people's favorite favorite book and I do have that one I have not read it just yet I picked up the do-over when it came out and and I thought it would be perfect to add in to my February TBR because it's got the pretty pink cover. I am obsessed with it. The back is actually better than the movie, so this is her other book. I'm super excited for this. I feel like I haven't actually read other people's reviews on it. I haven't seen a lot of people read it just yet, so I'm excited to give it a try and see what it's all about. I'm pretty sure this is like a Groundhog's Day type of trope. So Emily is basically living Valentine's Day over and over again. It's not the best day of her life. She basically catches her boyfriend cheating on her. That's gotta suck, you know, reliving that day over and over again. I think the whole day overall is just like the worst day ever for her. In the middle of it all comes Nick's star. No matter what she does or changes, Nick is always like the center of it. How many days can one girl spend passively watching her life go up in flames? And when something good starts to come out of these terrible days, what happens when the universe stops dueling out do-overs? Oh my gosh, look at the spine. It's so pretty. We are gonna hop right into this and see what this is all about. I'm so, so excited. The opening page already has me. Are you kidding? It says, for the lonely, the daydreamers, the ones who find their friends between the pages of books. You matter and your happy ending will come. Sometimes the wait is just longer in real life than in fiction. We are gonna hop right into this. I'm already obsessed with like the little aesthetic that's going on here. Oh, 
7 hours and 43 minutes and we are already 60 pages in which is honestly a breath of fresh air love on the brain literally took me so so long to read the story is going pretty fast so far much much faster than the last one which is really really nice because i just need a fast easy read right now so it's super cutie so far super easy going just your typical repeating day groundhog's day type of romance very very similar to in a holidays by christina lauren which is basically the same idea but it's during the holiday the main character emily is just stuck repeating valentine's day over and over again she's stuck watching her boyfriend josh cheat on her every single day honestly so crazy to me also on top of josh cheating on her it just seems like a series of unfortunate events happens every single day which just makes me feel so so bad for her. Nothing too crazy has happened just yet. We're just kind of watching her repeat the same day over and over again, but I'm starting to wonder if she's going to start altering the days, like changing things up, seeing how she can break this time loop. I don't know just yet. We also met Nick a few times very briefly. He gives me a very interesting vibe, I guess you could say. He acts like he doesn't know Emily, even though they sit next to each other and are basically lab partners. That's really weird, but I actually think for this chapter, after, I'm going to switch it up a little bit and put on the audiobook for it because I just feel like because we're doing a 24-hour readathon, I need to like keep it interesting and change it up a bit. I feel like if I'm physically reading for 24 hours, my brain just starts to turn to mush and I honestly don't take in the stories as well. I'm gonna try out the audiobook for this and see how Confession 9 goes. I've never actually listened to an audiobook before. So I'm really excited to try it out. Check out my cutie little headphone cases I just got. Literally obsessed. They're so perfect for the springtime. So excited. Okay, just an update on the whole audiobook version. It's honestly so weird because it's a female voicing the story, but when Nick or Josh, one of the male characters are talking, she literally lowers her voice. You sound more like a guy, which I'm sure is like the norm when it comes to doing audiobooks. They probably change their voices to sound more like the characters and make the story more realistic, but it just sounded so, so weird. I just could not take it seriously and it was throwing the whole story off for me. So I went through Confession 9 with the audiobook and I think... I think I'm gonna read like onward just myself just because the audiobook was not doing it for me. On the plus side, Emily and Nick are bonding over books and I thought that was a cute little twist of the story. Aside from the audiobook voice being kind of weird and throwing me off a little bit, I think this might be one of my favorite confessions so far just because Nick was really really cute and charming in it. I feel like we get to see more of his character and see what he's more about and Emily is also really really funny. She says some funny jokes in this chapter and I'm just like whoa I did not see that coming from her. I feel like the more we're reading on, the more Emily is becoming more comfortable and kind of bringing out like the real side of her and doing things that she wants to do. I think it's really, really cool to see her character development. I'm gonna keep reading for like another hour, hour and a half, and then we'll do another little check-in because I think we'll be a little bit more than halfway through the book and we'll be at the 10 hour mark. So we are almost 10 hours in, 10 hours of reading books and my brain is definitely starting to feel a little bit more which always happens when I am reading for such a long period of time. But we are on page 182, Confession 14. Good night. Enjoy your suffering. <laughs> When you go to sleep, that's when I get tired. Aww. You think you're so funny, don't you? <laughs> I really am so tired. And I'm literally only 10 hours in. I just feel like she's really funny how she's changing up the days because she's finally just doing things that she wants to do or things that she's always wanted to do. Confession 11 is probably my favorite, favorite chapter at the moment. I really liked Confession 9, but I think Confession 11 is taking its place. It's pretty crazy. Things that take place in that day but then when we got into confession 12 i feel like nick and emily's story got even better and i feel like we're getting like a better insight into nick's life and who he really is we only have like this little chunk to go so we're definitely gonna finish it up hopefully we will make it to the halfway mark without falling asleep i'm gonna try and stay up we're gonna keep reading keep going <laughs> Good morning, guys. 
as you can probably tell, your girl fell asleep. I really felt good. I was like, oh, I'm gonna be fine. Once it hits like 4 or 5 a.m., for some reason, that's when I always pass out. I pushed myself. I made it to the 12 hour mark. I did finish up the do over before pausing my timer and taking a quick nap. Like by the time I finished this book, my eyes just kept going down. And I knew I didn't have it in me to start the third book in this video because if I did, I just wouldn't have been able to understand what was going on in the beginning. We made it to the 12 hour mark and I finished the do over by Lynn Painter. This book, it was very cute. It was very, very cute. I have to say confession 16 and 17 were probably my favorite confessions in the book. Emily and Nick and how their relationship developed. But with that being said, I do feel like because of the whole idea of the Groundhog Day trope, it was really hard to connect to the characters because every day is just the same. I thought this was a cutie little rom-com, absolutely perfect for Valentine's Day. For my rating of this cutie little book, I'll have to make it a three-star read. To me, a three-star read is still a really good, worthy read. It's not a book I will probably keep in the back of my mind thinking about every day, but it was still a really cutie little Valentine's Day read, and I would recommend it to other people. I feel like it's also a really good YA romance, a clean romance. I thought this was really cute, but the fact that people say better than the movies is like leagues above it makes me really excited. So now we are going to be moving on to our third book in the reading vlog, and I'm super, super excited for this one, but also kind of nervous. We're going to be reading Funny You Should Ask by Alyssa Sussman. I'm not going to lie to you guys. I picked this book up solely because of this cover. I am absolutely obsessed with this cover. I think it is so, so cute. I am really excited to read this book because it sounds really interesting to me. It sounds really cute, but I'm nervous because I feel like I haven't seen the best reviews on it. I want to read it in today's video. I want to give it a chance. I believe this came out sometime last year, so it's still a pretty fairly new book. This tells the story of Hani and Gabe. Basically, Hani is like a reporter who interviews celebrities and Gabe is like a big time movie star who's about to take on the role of James Bond. I guess there's like a lot of controversy around him playing James Bond because he's American and not British. So Hani interviews him and I guess during the interview it kind of turns into a three day interview of them hanging out, spending the weekend together, going to Hollywood parties, events. It's just like a crazy unforgettable weekend they have. And then in the story we fast forward 10 years later, Hani and Gabe come back together to basically recreate this famous weekend that the world was just absolutely obsessed with. We are halfway through the readathon, 12 hours in. This is a fairly short book, so we are gonna hop right into it. So I just finished reading the prologue, the little intro to the story, and basically what happened is we're just kind of getting an insight into what Hani is actually doing, how she's gonna go interview Gabe Parker, the new James Bond star, and she has a lot riding on her shoulders because if the interview and her writing doesn't go well, her career is basically over, so a lot is literally riding on this interview with Gabe. And then right after I finished the prologue, it jumps right in to this and it looks like the story is gonna go between then and now so we're gonna get an insight into Hani's interview with Gabe and then we're gonna fast forward 10 years and get an insight into her and Gabe reuniting and basically recreating this crazy interview weekend they had. I am actually going to switch over to the audiobook for this just because it's absolutely gorgeous out and I feel like I really need some fresh air some sunlight so we're gonna go for a hot girl walk and read while we're doing it. Hopefully Hopefully it's better than the do-over because the girl who did the do-over I could not take her seriously. So far nothing crazy is happening but we've literally only read the prologue so we're gonna keep going and I'll update you guys soon. We 
are going on hour 13 and I am just getting to page 79 and we're about to switch over to now. For the past hour, I've been reading in the past 10 years prior to when Hani first met Gabe and she first did the interview with him. Nothing too crazy has happened just yet. It just seems like your typical interview. It's just Hani getting an insight into Gabe's life, what made him want to become an actor, what helped him be successful, stuff like that. I feel like things are starting to escalate a little bit because Gabe is like almost hinting at doing something more with Hani. It seems like he wants to maybe prolong the interview. There's also articles of Hani's inside the book and then there's also articles from other news sources inside the chapter so you're kind of getting like an insight into what the outside world is thinking so I think that's really cool. The only downside to it is it's a lot of he said she said in the book. Stan is literally cleaning himself right now. Look how cute he is. Gabe does seem like quite the charmer and quite the cutie. It's really cool. I'm enjoying it so far, but it's not really grabbing my attention. So I'm like nervous about this read, but I'm still very intrigued. I'm excited to see like where the interview goes and where the weekend goes. The whole main idea and plot of the story, something happened between Hani and Gabe during their first interview. And then they just like never talked again, I think. And so them reuniting 10 years later is like a really big deal. Okay, but we're gonna keep going. We are 15 hours in, 180 pages in. I actually stopped right on one of Hani's little articles that she wrote. So Ali is a side character in the story. At first, I didn't know how to feel about him because he gave me like a weird snobby vibe, but I actually really adore his character. I think he's so sweet and funny. I've been mostly reading about Gabe and Hani reuniting 10 years later to recreate their famous interview. There's just like a whole lot of stuff going on and there's just like this weird tension and I feel like in the beginning of this it wasn't really hitting for me I was kind of you know bored kind of like with love on the brain I just wasn't getting too into it but now that we've read like a good chunk and we've kind of read like the beginning part I'm actually getting really into it and I'm very curious to know more about Gabe and Hani's story I want to know what happened in their first interview all those years ago that kind of led to it being the most popular piece she's ever written but like also people just have all these weird assumptions about Hani and Gabe now and I'm getting so tired. We're gonna power through and keep going. 17 hours in and we have just finished up our third read of the reading vlog. Oh my gosh, I feel like so much has happened and it's just not how I expected the story to go, but I have to be honest, when I started this book, I did not like it. I was not vibing with it. It was another really slow read. It wasn't hitting for me. So I was very discouraged in the beginning and then we hit about like, halfway through probably page 150 things started to heat up things started to start moving and escalating and I started to get really really hooked it's just once you get halfway through the book you get so hooked on Hani and Gabe's story because you just want to know like what's going to happen next and what happened all those years ago there's just a certain point where you're like oh my gosh I need to know exactly what happened and why they're acting like this and I need to know what they're going to do to resolve this and what they're going to do moving forward this was starting off as a two star read for me because I just wasn't vibing with it but honestly by the end of it I have to say it is definitely another three star read for me although very unrealistic I still enjoyed the whole idea and storyline I loved going back and forth between the time periods and seeing how they met and seeing them 10 years later trying to recreate that magical weekend I love the side characters I thought Ollie was absolutely hilarious I adored his character so so much I feel like the big build up to the ending was worth it but at the same time I feel like it wasn't enough. I feel like the ending was almost cut short or maybe something was just missing out of it. I don't know what. I just feel like there was something missing. I wasn't totally satisfied by the end of this book but nonetheless I thought it was a pretty cute read. So we have about six hours left of the reading vlog which is absolutely insane that we have almost been reading for 24 hours. I am literally exhausted. We're gonna power through. We're gonna keep going.
reading the last book we're going to be reading in today's video is last chance books this is by kelsey rodkey and i honestly picked this book up because of its cover i just think this is so adorable i love that you can clearly tell they are bickering and not getting along and i love that they're standing on these cutie stacks of books in the middle it says book lovers can be haters too after reading the little blurb on the back i am actually really excited to read this because it's about two people basically running bookstores across from one another. Madeline is working at Books and More, her family bookstore, and this new bookstore opens up across the street called Prologue. Jasper works at Prologue and Madeline gets really upset because she's convinced that the reason that their bookstore isn't doing well is because of the bookstore across the street. I like the idea of this story and I'm excited to see what happens in it. This is also my book club pick of February. If you guys didn't know, I run my own personal book club over on the app fable it's completely free and each month we pick out a book to read together as a group we get to talk about it go chapter by chapter talking about the characters the tropes and it's just like a fun little community i have off of youtube where we can talk more read more just have fun reading books together if you guys want to join you can click the link down below this is our february book pick so i'm excited to be reading it in today's video so far i have seen a lot of people in the club say that they either really liked it or they're kind of iffy they don't know if it's good or not okay guys so we are 19 hours 44 minutes in i changed as you can tell because the white hoodie was just not doing it for me i feel like i was looking very ghostly we are almost to the 20 hour mark and this book i don't even know i feel like the books in this video like i'm happy we read them because they're books that have been on my tbr for so long and they're books i've had on my shelf for so long so i'm happy we finally got through them but they're just not hitting the way that i thought they would like i really thought i was gonna pull out some really great books out of this vlog books that people don't typically talk about or i haven't heard a lot about and i was super excited about that and then we read them and i was like oh they're just not giving you know what i mean the first like hour into this was very slow and kind of boring for me. I feel like it's just how the beginnings to all these books were. It's just setting up the story. We meet Madeline and she is helping run her family bookstore. Prologue opens across the street and that's where Jasper works. In the beginning, I don't think Madeline knows that he works there though and that's what starts their little enemies to lovers trope because when she finds out he's working for Prologue, that's when they kind of start like clashing. The story's really cute. I think Madeline says like really weird things sometimes I do love the idea that the book revolves around them trying to save their little indie bookstore. I think that is so, so cute. It definitely gives off all of like the cozy bookstore vibes, which I also really love. After we hit the first 60 pages, it started to pick up a little bit and something crazy happens. In the middle of their pranking and scheming against each other, something crazy happens, which kind of brings Jasper and Madeline closer. And it kind of caught me by surprise and it's definitely getting more interesting. I just just find it really hard to connect to the characters once again and I don't know if it's because we've been reading for 24 hours straight or if it's just because I'm not actually liking the book. It is super cute so far though. Bickering back and forth is hilarious but now we are on chapter 12 page 133. Look how cute these chapters are with their little book stack but we are gonna keep going. I'm kind of nervous to see what happens between Jasper and Madeline. They're just I don't know they're low-key kind of cringe. I have not checked in in a hot minute because we have actually hit our 20 for our mark and i've never been happier i don't know what happened during this reading vlog i think it was solely just me trying to stay up for 24 hours straight that kind of made me crash halfway through this but i am so happy we finally hit that because i am just so over this and it also doesn't help that the books that I have read in this vlog, they're just not, they're not doing it for me. And I think that's why I'm just like totally over this. We have been reading for 24 hours and I actually have not finished this book yet. We just hit page 303, chapter 25. I have the littlest bit left and I am going to finish this book in this vlog so we can actually talk about it and fully review it. I read a very large portion of this book. I don't think I checked in like once because I really just wanted to get through this. I think it's a really cute story. It's a really cute book. The whole idea is so adorable. The fact that this girl is trying to save her family bookstore. It's just, I love it. I love that that's the storyline. And if it wasn't for that storyline, I probably would 
DNF this book. I am going to finish this up and then we are going to do a book review on this. Talk about this whole experience we have just had together for the last 24 hours. When we talked last, I was on chapter 25, I think, and we were basically hitting the big climax of the story. It's just not how I expected things to go, I guess you could say. I thought this book was going to be at least three stars, but after reading the ending, I it. I have to give it a two star rating. I'm so bummed. I just wasn't impressed and I wasn't satisfied and I thought that this would at least be a three star read because I love the whole idea of this girl trying to save her family bookstore. I think that is such a cute story. I just don't like the way the author went about it. That's that I guess. I'm just kind of disappointed with every book we read. It just wasn't hitting for me but that's totally okay. We knocked off four books on my February TBR so I'm really happy about that. That's a plus. We gave a lot of books a try that have been on my TBR for so so long. I love doing challenges like this because without them I feel like I wouldn't push myself to read those books so I'm happy we did this regardless. But thank you so much for hanging out with me today and reading along with me. If you guys have read any of the books that we read in today's video comment down below what you thought about them, what your book ratings were. If you've made it this far in the video comment below pink bow emoji. That emoji is one of my favorites at the moment. It's just so cutie and I feel like it's perfect for the month of February. But yeah, thanks so much for hanging out with me today. I hope you had fun. I hope this pushes you and motivates you to tackle your TBR. I'm happy we finally knocked those books off my TBR because now I know and now we can move on and move forward from this. With all that being said, I hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your day or your night and I'll see you in my next video.